All right. Hi, I'm Holly. I'm moderating this panel today. Um, and to get started, let's just um, let each of our panelists have a few moments to introduce themselves. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, is it Aliyah? Yes. Oh, do you want to uh, start? Hi. I'm. Yeah, sure. Um, Aliyah Don Johnson. I am the writer of seven novels for adults and young adults. Um, most recently, uh, um, Trouble the Saints, <laughs> out from Tor, what is my book called? Out from Tor uh, this past July, um, and a short story collection called Reconstruction uh, out from Small Beer Press a few weeks ago. Um, and uh, happy to be here. Okay, nice, welcome. Um, Charlie. Hi, my name is Charlie N. Holmberg. I'm an internationally published best-selling author of fantasy. Essentially, I write magic with kissing. My debut series has been optioned by Disney. And, oh, I usually hold it up. I don't know where I put it. My latest series, oh, it's over there on the floor. My latest series is called Spellbreaker. And the second book in that comes out on March 9th. Nice. Um, okay, Jessica. Unmute. Okay. <laughs> I did not know that about Disney. And your series, is that the Paper Magician? Charlie, is yes, it the Paper Magician series? <laughs> so cool. <laughs> um, so I'm uh, Jessica Day George, and I'm the best-selling author of 16 books and a couple of short stories, all of them fantasy, some young adult, some middle grade. Um, my latest book, The Writer's Reign, just came out at the height of lockdown last June. Very exciting. Such a great time to be alive and trying to launch a book. So fun. Um, and is the last book in my trilogy about uh, magical horses, basically, that I started writing in a Cabbage Patch Kid journal when I was 12. So I was very excited to finally get to write the ending scene that I had planned for since I was 12. Um, and yeah, I am sitting here in a giant stack of books ready to talk about other people's books, though. Okay. Okay, Todd. Hello, I'm Michael Todd Gallaglass. I uh, I like to write. I like stories. I'm a professional storyteller. Uh, have been for most of my adult life, like on a stage and stuff. Uh, I have two degrees in writing. I'm currently getting my third, uh, my second MFA this time in poetry on my way to my PhD because I think Dr. Gallo glass will sound really, really cool. Uh, and so I, for writing wise these days, I like to take, um, other, um, other types of, uh, normally I do sort of fantasy reimaginings of other types of genres like i'll take uh literary war fiction and then make a a fantasy series like reimagining the the structures and tropes of that genre uh i'm currently working on sort of a a skewed um um uh D, D retelling that's a mashup of tiger king and care of magical beasts and where to find them all right, so my name is Sarah Seeley. Um, I am a Paleolithic archaeologist, um, and I'm very happy that I got my master's degree before the uh, pandemic hit. <laughs> so um, I feel very relieved that uh, that happened. Um, uh, that that I got my master's degree uh, before that. Anyways, um, I I write science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Um, I am uh, I've published with some small press publishers. I write mostly uh, shorter length work, so novelettes um, and short stories. Um, and I'm also self-published um, and uh, yeah, trying to start a writing YouTube channel. So I'm working, working on lots of things. Okay, well, welcome everybody. I'm Holly Anderson. Um, I'm an author. I have six published books. The seventh one will be out in uh, April. I'm also the um, chief editor at, at Immortal Works Press. Um, all right, so let's get started. I love um, I love this subject. So um, I'm just I'll just ask a couple of seed questions, get us started. You guys, just chime in. I'm not going to call on you. Just chime in if you have an answer. Okay. Um, first of all, what kinds of books do you read most? 
So, um, to be honest, uh, just because I'm a scientist, I like to read nonfiction the most. Um, that's where I, that's kind of my happy place. And that's where I get a lot of inspiration um, for things I want to do with my own fiction um, or things that are interesting to me just in terms of my, my particular field of study in, uh, in archaeology. Um, so that's, that's actually kind of my, my sweet spot is nonfiction um, and uh, science related books. <laughs> um, no, my favorite, favorite genre to read is romantic fantasy. Um, so much to the point now where I have a really hard time picking up a book if I know there isn't a romance in it. But I always just think that romance with some kind of amazing, fantastical plot line is just, that just gets me. And I also read nonfiction when I want to sleep at night, so... <laughs> What a burn! <laughs> like, <laughs> oh well, I, 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 I'll be happy to read you my master's dissertation someday. That'll put you right to sleep. <laughs> oh my gosh! My father-in-law said that to my husband about something that he wrote because he's a he's a web programmer. My <laughs> over Zoom, my father-in-law is like, "Yeah, I keep uh, reading your article you had published every time I'm having trouble sleeping," and I'm like. Oh my gosh, who said that to their kid? Like, my father-in-law, apparently. But anyway, um, I just, I will read anything and I actually try to rotate so that I don't uh, get bored because I've found that when I try to read like, like when I found a series that's already been going for a while, like when I discovered the Dresden file books and I like read nothing but Dresden file books until I was caught up to the rest of my book club there with like number six or something like that at the time. And then I never wanted to read one again for like years, even though I love them because I was just like, they all blurred together. Or something. So I like will actively rotate like, okay, I just read a really big adult fantasy. So I'm going to read a, a realistic middle grade book, like a contemporary middle grade book or like, and then I'm going to read like a Swedish noir and like watch some people get killed in the snow for a bit and stuff like that. And then I'll be back in the mood for some fantasy or something where probably more people get killed in the snow. But you know, so <laughs> I, I actually try to break it up so that my little squirrel brain doesn't get bored and wander away. <laughs> Yeah, um, I actually go through seasons, so a little like Jessica, but like, you know, I'll go through my, my right now I'm in the middle of, a, of an adult fantasy kick, um, which is exciting to me because I, I read like pure fantasy when I was younger, um, and I kind of gravitated away from from like high fantasy now. And now that there's so much different stuff happening in high fantasy, like a whole lot happened while I was away, and so now I'm kind of excited and like going back and <laughs> And seeing all sorts of, of new and, and interesting things going on, like things that, you know, I mean, for all I know, it was getting published back then, too. But like, that wasn't what I had access to. And so now I, I feel like I'm like rediscovering it. So that's exciting. Before that, I was on a YA kick, um, you know, that lasted probably like a year. You know, I mean, I, I, I generally read YA anyway, but, you know, like the concentrated dose. Um, and, and even I, I went through kind of like a brief period of, of like of, of trying out like some different literary fiction titles which which when I was younger I also what is this you know but now now I don't know if it's like it got better I just figured out how to like discriminate better but now there's all sorts of stuff I find interesting in that too and even stuff that's marketed as lit fic that turns out that it's totally speculative and I don't know why it's like it's like someone is like playing some kind of trick on both us and lit fic readers like and you know that this is actually this fantasy I don't know if you realize that but that's what this is I, I like reading well-written books those are my those are my favorite kind of those are my favorite kind of books to read. <laughs> nice. All right. Um, before about the last few years, I uh, I was stuck on fantasy, urban fantasy, um, mostly YA. Um, but since um, hooking up with Immortal Works, I started out as an uh, acquisitions editor. Um, now I read all genres, <laughs> other than nonfiction. I do read some nonfiction in my own spare time, um, but but I'm, I I kind of like the variety. It's really nice to to read a lot of different genres um, from new authors, books that nobody else has read yet. So so that's that's where I'm at. Um, and I also write the same way. I write in multiple genres. So um, all right. Uh, what are some of your old favorites? Um, now the question says, what are 
the ones that you return to over and over. But even if you if you aren't one of those people that rereads things, what what are your old favorites? Um, so a book that I read, um, uh, it was kind of my first uh, um, kind of full size uh, grown up style book, I guess. Um, I started reading it when I was like thirteen or something. Was um, Andromeda Strain by Michael Crichton. Um, and I mean, I feel like my interests have certainly kind of moved away from Michael Crichton's books a little bit, but, um, I remember just, uh, really enjoying, um, it, it, it actually started off, I, I saw, um, like a, a movie that was made in like the sixties or something for it. So I had to read the book. And, um, so I, that's, that's one that I, um, that I enjoy from, uh, yeah, from when I was younger, um, that kind of got me more into, a uh, little bit older uh, books or for an older audience. That's a good movie. You know, oh, I really like that caveat that you put on there. It's like some people don't reread books and I really consider myself one of those people. I don't, I so seldomly reread books, but there are a few that I have. And the very first book I ever reread, so this is my best old favorite as a, a youth, or I guess a teenager, was um, Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine first book I ever read twice and that like surprised me and the other book uh, I've probably read it about three times now is House Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones I love that book that book there you go <laughs> that book is like a comp title for almost every single book that I have written I love it so much and I love the Studio Ghibli adaptation of it as well so those are the two I would definitely recommend oh Charlie yeah some, somewhere that movie is don't, still played in my it. head. I what? love that movie. Don't even. That, <laughs> like, I, I love that movie. I just remember like, I love... turning it on and just, it went on so long that my kids were like, can we, can we go now? Can we go do something else? And I'm like, oh, it's been like six hours. Sure, why not? I feel like it's just still playing somewhere. I feel like that movie never ended. Like, I have no memory of the ending of that movie. Somewhere in my house, there's probably a TV still playing that movie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I actually I just, read the book because of the movie. Like that's why that's I read the good. book. That's great. <laughs> good for you. I love that the book, like so much of Miyazaki is to me like one of my favorite humans. You know, I mean I I, I cannot so even funny. describe I the extent love, to which I adore those movies. I love Miyazaki. I was so excited that he did Howl's Moving Castle and I loved his stories when he was he, I've seen him talk about like when he met when he met Diana and I was just like oh he got to meet her and stuff like that and then I watched the movie I'm like what is happening I don't like it so. oh I actually I almost named my son Wynn after Diana Wynn Jones but oh that was number two on but, the list it didn't make it but I feel like okay just just putting this out there like I just rewatched Howl's Moving Castle the movie and then that was I thought to myself could I not reread *Howl's Moving Castle* the book? I wonder how this holds up. Okay, so spoiler alert: this holds up so well. It's so great, and um, and I was really impressed by like the ways that all of the elements because it's it, it, it there's like lots of divergences in the movie, but like honestly, like everything that's in the movie is actually in the book. It's just sort of remixed in an interesting way. Um, and I and I think like I don't know. I I thought that was I thought that was really interesting, especially because he brought out you know it's Miyazaki, so it was like all the war themes and and the kind of yeah. like culpability and stuff like that, which was you know yeah. like that was like a sub subplot <laughs> of the book. Um, but yeah, I mean, going back and rereading books, I do sometimes when I do, I'm always a little worried when it's from childhood because often I remember like my memory is so deep and fond, and then the reality is maybe you know like I can still see the thing that I loved but I'm I'm coming at it from such a different angle now that sometimes it just doesn't work at all um but Diana Wynne Jones always holds up um Fire yeah. and Hemlock was one of those like I just reread it and reread it too when I was younger and um another one that I I when I read it like I love that book so much that like, I still have the paperback that I originally got and like the last 50 pages are warped because of how often I've cried over them is Guy Gabriel Kay's Tigana. It's like just yes. one of the most brilliant books written in fantasy. It's amazing. It has one of those amazing romances in fantasy. By the way, <laughs> uh, not happy. It's not, it's not happy, but it's wonderful. In my it's early 20s, I discovered it. Harlan Ellison and he's like my, he's my comfort read. I have like up there, I have this like super thick Harlan Ellison like retrospective 
it's like like almost 1500 pages and that's my like when i when i need to remind myself kind of why i started doing because sometimes we always go through the slog of why am i doing this i'll go back to i'll go back to jeff ds5 or repent harlequin and i'll go back and read those and go oh yeah this is what this is what this is what genre can do I am um, because Fire and Hemlock reminded me this is one of my all time favorite books is this is my second copy because I had to carefully preserve the original copy. But Tamlin by Pamela Dean, which made college so deeply disappointing when I got there and not everyone just wanted to sit around all day reading and quoting Shakespeare. And I was mad, so mad. And there were no fairies disguised as professors at BYU. It was very disappointing, just deeply deep disappointment. I just reread it again and was realizing I kept track in the original, like I would make a little tick on the back page. And so this was probably the 15th time that I have read this book this last time. True story. And some, and we said Guy Gabriel K. I love it so much. This one's my favorite. Sometimes I, j- the Serentine Mosaic is the second book in like a duology. And sometimes I just reread the epilogue to have like a little cathartic good cry and I told him yeah. that when I met him, that sometimes I just read the last page of this book to have a little cry. And he looked past me at my sister and he's like, is she okay? And my sister's like, no, she's always been like this. She's fine. You should have gone to, you need a cry. You should have gone to, you should have gone to college in the university of Cork instead of BYU. You'd find some fairies disguised as professors there. <laughs> I tried. My parents wouldn't let me. They said they would pay for BYU, but I was on my own if I wanted to go somewhere weird. So I went to BYU. So I didn't have any BYU's money. not weird. <laughs> Glad somebody else it's said weird it. In an unpleasant way. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird in a familiar way, right? <laughs> <laughs> now it was very unfamiliar oh. to me. I was like, what is happening? But anyway, <laughs> that's a topic for another time. <laughs> Um, my, my, um, early, like grade school, early grade school reading, um, I loved Beverly Clary. Like that was my librarian just knew to hand me a Beverly Clary book when I walked in. So that's my first, I mean, I I just, I have such a (laughs) love for books that it's hard for me to pick a favorite, but, um, the one that I reread, or I guess the series that I reread is Harry Potter, um, I just find something new every time in every book that I missed before. Um, and I just love it. I just love the storytelling. Um, and my granddaughter who is now 11 has been reading the series. And so I've been trying to, I've been reading it again along with her and she just finished the seventh book, um, last week. And my deal was when she read all seven books, we would go to Harry Potter world in Florida and we are doing that next week. So, oh, really? Oh, is it open? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, th- that's motivation. That's what got her. That's what got her started and made her decide she really likes to read. So, I was happy for that. And I, I just have so many favorites. I love Brandon Sanderson, and I love the Dresden series. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's too. It's hard There's to choose. So many good books out there. So many. Um, a Wrinkle in Time, that was probably my first um, fantasy type novel that I read. I was in the fourth grade. I tried to get my teacher to read it to the class, and she said, it's too old for most of your classmates. I'm like, what? Well, like old mature, <laughs> not like old-fashioned old? Uh, no, like, oh, yeah, old mature. Like, this is it's okay, too hard. I'm it's like, too hard to understand. I remember my teachers dusting off stuff from the 40s or something yeah, like that. Like, right. Surely your parents right. cannot object to this book about... <laughs> Gripping tales for young lads or something like that. <laughs> exactly. So somebody the other day was talking on Twitter about, does anyone else remember the fourth book or the, yeah, the fourth book in the time quartet, Many Waters and how freaking weird that was. And a couple of people were like, I, I thought I hallucinated that. Many Waters. I love, that was my favorite one. I read it that It was my so favorite times. one. I've read it so many times. <laughs> but literally there are, people running around naked topless women there's a gory birth scene there's like angels sleeping (laughs) with tiny child-sized teenage girls it's very weird stuff 
And somebody was like, I literally thought that this was something I had made up. I did not realize that that was an actual book that I read. <laughs> well, I, 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 I my like Andrea Monsters. monsters. That, that was what the it. sequel? <laughs> I didn't realize that every full time was a series. Like until I was a grown up. I just loved that book that I got from the library. The yeah. Swiftly Tilting Planet was my favorite for a while. And then I discovered Many Waters like when I was in high school. And I could not get enough of that. I'm like, this is just, it's so bizarre. And there was just something so appealing up. about it, though. It's so different from the others. But yeah, it's it's about Noah's Ark. They go back in time and help build Noah's Ark. And there's like ranks of angels that have come to Earth. And some of them are getting up to no good. <laughs> it's just hmm. really crazy. Like Supernatural Angels. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. I totally, when I started watching Supernatural, I'm like, somebody here has read Many Waters. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Many Angels. angels. <laughs> but perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. What about new and upcoming authors or books? What do you have? What do you got for us? New and upcoming. New I and upcoming. just read one of my students told me that I should read. This is how you lose yes. the time war. It's and so good. It is gorgeous. It is, it is, it is, it is breathtakingly lovely. The plot is amazing. The interaction between the two protagonists is wonderful. The time travel is um, like, and this is the, um, and the prose. Um, like I have two things. It just won every award, didn't it? it yeah. Won, like it's, every award. It, you will become a better writer from reading this book. And two of my favorite lines are, she sees her and breaks like a wave. Hmm. Oh. And then so I want to be a context for you and you for me. Oh. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's so good. It's a love story. It's got it, time travel. It's it one, is basically one protagonist is 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 a science fiction pro hero, and one of them is is a fantasy hero. And the and one it's, of them works works through the world in like a fantastical, like almost like hedge magic, like growing organic things way. And the other one is like high tech. It's, it's just, and they're so fighting good. a war. It's so good. And so carefully crafted great. on every level. The, the story to it's just, it, yes. If, 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 if everybody go get this, read it. And if you don't enjoy it, I'm sorry for whoever hurt your soul. <laughs> i'm sorry you're dead inside <laughs> um and then my other one my other one are well actually are we going to get to favorite all-time favorite books at some point or should i save it um save it we, we can do that we can do that at the end okay <laughs> let's talk let's talk about i have to so tyler whitesides is local boy yeah. local boy makes good and he's mostly known for his middle grade series like the janitors series about like evil janitors fighting with mops and and things like that and then in the last couple of years he's done these just freaking massive he did this series and i kind of have had the same experience as a alia where i used to read nothing but the thickest high fantasy i could get my little hands on as a teenager and stuff and then i feel like kind of been there done that and then all of a sudden a couple years ago I looked around and went oh my gosh there's such amazing stuff coming out and this the Arder Ben is the series it's about this like professional thief named Arder Ben is like reminds me so much of the stuff I read as a teenager like the old school stuff but it's very very different you know he's a thief and he's trying to do a heist and all this stuff it's very Ocean's Eleven-y in the first one even the magic system, though, is so unique. Their whole magic system is based around ash that comes from dragons, like burning dragon scales. And there's a whole system to it that he worked out, that like he spent years working on. So, like, they have these powders, and you have, like, red ash, and it's like a red dragon scales were ground in a certain way and then processed in a certain way, and now that red ash can be used to do 
X, Y, Z. And if you're going to do this type of thing, you need blue ash and blue ash is made this way and stuff like that. And there are people that their whole, you know, their economy revolves around people who go grab dragon scales without getting killed, bring them back and process them and stuff like that. And so there's like a level of technology to a certain extent. And it is so good and so clever. And there's so many twists and, and like professional, like, um, there's these people that are basically like his his personal professional costume people, and it's like the whole identity. Like they're like, you can have this costume, and it you know costs thousands and thousands of gold coins, and it's because they literally set up a whole identity for this person. And if he takes on, he's buying not just a costume like a suit of clothes, but an actual like identity persona. Like the person's an author, and there's actually a body of work in libraries that has been for years that belongs to this fake persona that he bought to use as a disguise. Like he has professional disguise artists that work for him. It's so clever and unique. And there's the third one just barely came out. So all three of them are out. It's a trilogy and they're all about a thousand pages long and they are so much fun. I told my neighbor across the street who like does not ever read fantasy at the beginning of lockdown, she was like, please tell me the name of a really, really long book. So, you know, to buy. And so I told her about the first one and she just texted me like an hour ago. She's like, have you read book three of Art or Ben yet? Because we need to talk. And I'm like, oh my gosh, no, she's like gone ahead of me. I haven't read the third one yet. So, so fun. Nice. So when uh, we said upcoming authors, I think she published probably about three years ago. So she's not crazy new. I was trying to think of somebody, and the one that came to mind was um, Margaret Rogerson. So I, I'm i kind of growing out of YA a little bit, and I am not really a fae person. But <laughs> she wrote An Enchantment of Ravens, which is a YA fae book, and it was so freaking good. And then she has a second book out called Sorcery of Thorns, I believe. Also very good. So I think she is an author definitely to look out for. She's just, I don't know. It's a really good balance between um tropes and new material and she has like good emotional writing which is like the number one thing that I love in books is when like my heartstrings get plucked so when you say upcoming authors I would recommend Margaret Rogerson um let's see so I mean uh um let's see so upcoming authors I don't know I'm I'm trying to figure out how to interpret that I've got like a, a local author that um that I want to talk about and then like a uh you know a, a big house publisher uh book that that I like but um uh I'll, no, I'll start with the uh, um <laughs> okay um so um uh so there's a series um called Sands that's written by Kevin L Nielsen that I really like um and uh he's he's with small press publishers at the moment but he it's a beautiful YA um fantasy uh, book series and um it's about a young woman the the setting is kind of like middle eastern feeling um and so they're out in the desert and um they have curvy swords and things like that and um and there's they have curvy uh, swords. <laughs> um the, the cover she's got a curvy sword um and uh um yeah and and uh um yeah and this girl discovers that she has some special kinds of powers um and there's great uh, relationships uh just just kind of interesting things um some mild politics that are going on that uh um, it's it's just pleasant for for a YA style read um so that's that's a book i enjoy um to be truthful i've only read the first book in his series um in kevin's series I, he's got uh, i know he has at least one more published he might have all three of them published um but um, yeah, so Sands by Kevin L. Nelson. Um, and then uh, kind of a, a book from, you know, one of the big publishers that I like. Um, it's also a few years old, but um, The Lie Tree by Francis Hen- Hendridge, um, which is, it's kind of interesting. It's like historical. Um, so it takes place, um, I don't know, kind of like late 1800s, early 1900s, maybe um uh, so there's kind of like scientific revolution kinds of stuff going on um and uh 
this this girl um, uh, and her parents um, get on a ship and they go off to this. Um, they move. I think they move to an island is what it is. And um, I don't know. This girl just loves her dad and just really respects him. Uh, but it shows a lot of um, I mean, the, the book really emphasizes sort of women being uh, a little bit um, devalued in the in the society and how. Uh, this girl is is kind of coping with her uh, uh, with this this kind of aspect of of her society, and she has a lot of respect for her dad, and she loves him. Um, and then he ends up dying, and she figures out that there's all this stuff going on with her dad. That um, y- you know he wasn't quite the upstanding person that she thought he was, and there's like this magic tree thing that um, she can. Uh, talk to and um, you'll have to read the book to find out more about it but um, it's it's kind of interesting because it's a little bit creepy um, but it's it's like YA level um, so it's not like super deep horror kinds of things but um, kind of interesting family relationship dynamics and uh, things like that um, and kind of a historical context to it as well so that's one that I like. Here's such good things about that. I was going to say, I've talked about this twice yesterday, but speaking of new books and about women, like how the women are treated in a society, The Once and Future Witches by Alex Harrow is just, I can't put it down. I've been reading it really slowly over the past week because I don't want to have to stop reading it. But it's like an alternate history where there really were witches at Salem and there have been witches in the past and they really were burning witches and it's basically to keep women down. And it's just a wonderful story. And it's got, a lot of like fairy tales and nursery rhymes in it that it's like, if you use this, you know, Jack and Jill went up the hill, but if you also, when you say it, you're holding like a crow feather and, and, and a piece of broken glass, then it has this particular effect. Like it's their spells and the way they've been Mm -hmm. hidden over the years is by putting them in children's stories and rhymes and stuff. And that's how these women are trying to like recapture their power by gathering all these children's stories for spells. Oh, the storyteller folklorist in me is going nuts, and I need this book in my life you will as love soon it. as I'm the done with grad school. Which is, and also, though, Todd, I was going to say to you, if you like, I, this is how you lose the time war, Midwinter Blood. Marcus Sedgwick is a really unusual author, and this this one won the Prince Award. He's won multiple awards, young adult awards. I don't think it's really young adult. But, so um, what what is what is it? Midwinter Blood, I would love to see someone do this as a movie because you would only need a cast of about six characters, but it's it's like six interconnected stories or eight, and each one is a different style. There's a murder mystery. There's a vampire story. It starts out as a science fiction story, and it goes back in time and shows how sort of these different souls have kept coming together. Like So it's and- like, is it is it like, a, and they're all tied together? They're all tied together and it goes backwards so you don't know until the end why. why so it's they kind of like a Cloud other. Atlas thing. Yes. In a way, it is like the Cloud Atlas. I love the Cloud Atlas. Oh, if you my love gosh. The Cloud Atlas, you'll totally go for this. Like, yeah. And what was the other one? Every, what? This was the first the one. I'm, I'm typing the, the, no, the other one that you did, the witches oh, one. The Once and Future Witches, like the Once and Future King. Once and Future Witches, but Midwinter Blood is a really unusual, unusual book. And it's so funny because it won the Prince Award, you know, for teen books a couple of years ago. And I feel like nobody read it. Like I've frequently seen it at the library, like for sale, because nobody checked it out, you know, because they all buy a bunch of copies when they win an award. And then mm-hmm. our library, I frequently see them looking like they've never been opened on the sale table because they never got checked out. And I'm like, because it's super weird. There's it's almost not for kids. There's almost no teens in it. And there's like a horror story. There's a Victorian, like a Victorian ghost story. There's like a Viking saga, like all these different styles of stories as it goes back in time to show you where these souls came from. All his books have been great. Uh, He did. um, Oh my gosh. What is it? He did this one that's set in in Romania, like in the Carpathian Mountains. That's a vampire story, and I'm like, yes, yes, a vampire story. It goes so deep into a twist of not the traditional vampire story. By the end, I'm just like, I don't remember how we got to here or how this started, but I like it. Marcus Sedgwick <laughs> is his name. He's really, really doing some unusual things, and I think his first book was published less than ten years ago. Every year, he puts out a book completely different. So unusual, so good. 
Nice. Uh, um, Aliyah, did you have one, anything that you wanted to mention on new and upcoming authors? Um, I like this. She's exactly a new author, but she has, she has a, like a really great um, novel that like just came out is Joe Walton um, and, or what you will. Um, yes. I, I've, I loved Joe Walton's recent runs. Like I'm, I'm like every time I'm like, I don't know what this strange, like metafictional, like <laughs> take on, on this genre that we love will be, but like, there's always something there. And so the most recent one um, is, or what you will is, is literally told from, from the point of view of the imaginary friend <laughs> that the, main character writer has who is a writer of books that are quite similar to books that Joe Walton has written and she's um for a second I thought it was like you know, autobiographical to... I was like wait a minute wait a minute <laughs> yeah yeah no I also I also kind of had and then there was like that the kind of shift where you realize oh no she's describing books that aren't actually her books they are so close to her books and so you know it's he's clearly making all sorts of like super extra like three levels of meta commentary on yeah. them and the and like the imaginary friend character is also the one who has like kind of inhabited these roles in all of her novels. And so he's it's her like muse. Kind of discourse on creativity. Yeah, like he's her muse, but yeah. like the muse lives in he's, her bone he's cave. He's been a AKA character in each of her books. Yeah, I love that one yeah, so it's, much. It's a real, it's a it's writer's so book. Don't you feel like that, like you appreciated it so much more because you are a writer? Yeah, it, my and sister I, did not I like, like it as well. My sister was like, "I'm not sure I like this," and I'm like, "Oh, I could not stop. It was so great." <laughs> it's I just, but I really, I really enjoy her most her, her most recent books. I mean, she also, you know, I feel like among others is totally like a a fan book. You know, I mean, they're just they're very much like books that like love the genre and and are 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 kind of co but coming to it from like a very interesting, like very thoughtful perspective. Um, and it mentioned one of my favorite books of all time, <laughs> the uh, Sophia Samatar's A Stranger in Alondria, which I, I feel like I cannot leave any kind of book recommendation panel without plugging. Like, please read this book. It is so brilliant. Okay, great. Um, I just have a couple I want to mention real quick. Um, and, and, this, and this one isn't really a new writer, but he is up and coming um, and doing really well is Dave Butler, DJ Butler. Um, he's probably here somewhere. Um, <laughs> he's, he, he's kind of, he's kind of, um, he, he writes in uh, different genres, different ages, different, he's, which is what I do too. Maybe that's why I, I like his writing so much, but, and he's just so intelligent. Um, and that, that bleeds through no matter whether it's a middle grade a YA or an adult novel that he writes, his intelligence bleeds through. So, um, I love, I love his writing. Um, and then, um, Pete Fanning, you all need to, you all need to check out Pete Fanning and yes, Immortal Works discovered him. <laughs> so I might be a little partial, but I don't think I am. I think I am so in love with his writing. Um, his prose is just beautiful. Like every time I read one of his books, I feel like, um, I feel like it makes me a better writer as well. And I always like to like quote the things that he, some of the prose in his books and he writes middle grade. Well, middle grade, he has a couple of YAs coming out this year. Um, yeah. Just amazing, and he writes really um, like intense subjects, um, like racism, like um, undocumented, um, like an undocumented um, teenager. And, I mean, he, he, he sexual uh, sexual harassment, sexual assault. He he writes them, but in a way that that isn't um, overtly. I don't know it, it it fits it fits with um with the age group that he's writing for um and and I don't you know I, like I said earlier I I haven't always been a great fan of contemporary novels but he is one of my favorite authors um and his books are amazing um and anyway I highly recommend them even the middle grades for adults for for all ages 10, 10 years and, and up because they're just amazing. His storytelling ability is just incredible. So those are my up and coming <laughs> favorites. Um, all right, let's see, where are we with time? All right, let's, let's go to um, Michael Todd's uh, uh, question, all time favorites. Let's talk about all time favorites and then we'll leave a little bit of time for Q and A. Okay, I'm well, then I'll go first since it was no. a, <laughs> a, a, a visit from the goon squad by Jennifer Egan. 
this is easily hands down my all time favorite book. It is an examination of chaos theories through relationships, kind of through the uh, entertainment industry. And uh, it is a, it is a sleeper science fiction novel, won the Pulitzer prize. And it's, it is, it is a book that totally deserves that each, um, each chapter is told from a different perspective. They, she moves between tenses, POVs. Like she, there's one that's in second person, uh, the present tense, past tense. She even delves into future tense in a couple of places because she talks about where people are go in, the, and and she weaves throughout all these characters' lives. And I'm going to give a little bit of a spoiler as to how brilliant this book is. Part of it is written in as a PowerPoint presentation from the perspective of a kid making a PowerPoint presentation. But by the time you get there, you know all the characters involved in that so that when you're reading it, it's like, yes, it's the presentation, but you visually see everything playing out in the presentation in there. And she makes commentary on, on social media and me, it's oh, it's just it's so good. She it's, and she tweeted at me once. It was awesome. <laughs> like that's like a couple times we went back and forth once about the definition of science fiction and whether or not this is a science fiction book, which it absolutely is. But she doesn't because she comes from the academic world. She doesn't want to claim that for herself, even though she knows it's she knows she's playing with it's oh it's so good. It is. It's just so good. Go read this. It'll change your life. <laughs> I've guy. And then one other one that, for like, all you comic that, nerds out the there. Still yeah, for all you comic nerds out there, "Missing You, Metropolis" by Gary Jackson is poetry about comics and growing up as a black nerd. One of the uh, poems in this is about Mary Jane Parker and Betsy Banner comparing their love lives with their superhero husbands. <laughs> no. <laughs> so good. So this is because this from the, the poet in me is like giving a shout out to Gary because this is such a great book. So if you're into comics and stuff, go check out, go check out Missing You Metropolis. <laughs> Okay, we don't have a lot of time. Nope, too bad. I'm talking, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> I raised my hand. I'm like, I have to get mine in. <laughs> so I'll go quick. I have like a whole list here, but I'll just do my favorites. Um, one of my favorite books of all time is The Bird and the Sword by Amy Harmon. I really think that everything Amy Harmon writes is freaking fantastic. If you want that like emotional pull in a book, pick up an Amy Harmon book. But she does have a few fantasy novels. Bird and the Sword is one of my favorites. And then um, The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin is one of the ones I've read multiple times. It's so good. I just, I don't know why. I just love that one so much. Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier. And the only epic fantasy I will read anymore because I don't have time for it is Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. I feel like he doesn't need to be plugged, but I'm just <laughs> going to say that it's really good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I really like old timey authors. I'm a huge Charles Dickens nerd and my sister and I realized that we had not read all of his works. So by the way, if you would like to join us, we have a Facebook group called Boz's Book Babes. And this year we are reading all of his novels in chronological order and we are on to Nicholas Nickleby right now. I love that Please book. feel free to join along. I love, I love that book. I have not read that one. David Copperfield <laughs> and A Christmas Carol are two of my all time favorite books. I am a huge Dracula fan. And I just discovered this recently, by the way, that a couple of years after Dracula was written, an Icelandic publisher translated it into Icelandic. And about 10 years ago, they went to put a new foreword into all the copies of Dracula, like an anniversary intro by his, his descendant, Daker Stoker, that's making a lot of money off that last name right now. And um, somebody actually, a person who had read Dracula in English actually read the Icelandic Dracula and discovered that the publisher had not really cared for it. And so he had cut out a lot of what he considered filler. 
um, including one of the characters that he didn't think needed to be there, and completely changed the ending so that it's a lot more dramatic and has a lot more action. And he had upped the romance quotient and made it a lot more erotic between Mina and Dracula. Dracula is a fantastic novel that I think everyone should read, but this is phenomenal. For over 80 years, no one knew that some guy had rewritten Dracula. It's been hugely popular in Iceland for like 100 years. And they're all just like, yeah, Dracula, right? Where like Mina and the Count are like making it, you know, like they had no idea. Most people had no idea. Fabulous. So it's called Powers of Darkness. And it's like the versions they have now are totally annotated. So you can see where he like what changes the guy made and stuff like that. So fun. And also because big classics nerd. If you have read Frankenstein and you love Frankenstein and you love Mary Shelley, if you have not seen Mary's monster, Lita, I always want to say Lita Ford, but that's the girl from the um, music videos. Anyway, Lita Judge is it is a picture book illustrator. She primarily writes beautiful watercolored picture books. She uh, became obsessed with Mary Shelley a couple of years ago when she was sick and was listening to Dracula or uh, Frankenstein on audiobook for the first time. And she wrote a biography of Mary Shelley, all in poems, which she then illustrated herself with charcoal on wet oh, wow. paper so that it's like this really unusual format. And it's called Mary's Monster. And I highly recommend reading Frankenstein and then reading Mary's Monster. And this is my... Oh. I recommended it to my mom because she had to give a presentation in her book club on Frankenstein. And so I sent her a copy of this. So she, these are all her notes. And when I met Lita at a, an event last year, she made me take this copy and get it signed to me because she doesn't want to keep it anymore. But she made me show her, these are all her favorite of the poems. I'm like, my mom says, I have to tell you that this one's her favorite and this one's because my mom loved this so much it's gorgeous the pictures are gorgeous the poems are just beautiful so mary's monster great charlie do you have any all-time favorites um i already said mine charlie talked a lot of <laughs> yeah. talks. i'll give okay. you more if you want okay i'll i'll go <laughs> okay i'll go next um i'll try to be quick um so i'm going to do one fiction and two non-fiction since i'm the the nonfiction person on on this panel too, um, but uh, a fiction series that I really like is the Brother Cadfile Chronicles. Um, these are a little bit older books, but it's um, basically about a monk who uses medieval forensics to try and solve murder mysteries, and it's a lot of fun. It's a whole series of books um, by Ellis Peters, um, and so that's a lot of fun. Um, that's one of my favorites. Um, and then for nonfiction books, my all-time favorite is called Your Inner Fish by Neil Shubin. Let's see. Let's back it up a little bit. And um, this is about the evolution of our bodies and how we're connected to all life on Earth. And it's really fun. So Your Inner Fish. And then another, um, <laughs> it's really cool. I love this book. Um, and then another nonfiction book that I really like is called I Contain Multitudes. And it's um, another pop science book that I think is really good. And it's about our relationship with our microbiomes and our bodies and how um, the way the microbes in our bodies um, interact with us through our diet and things, um, all kinds of things. Like we, we have this really strong symbiosis with our, with our um, inner alien microbes <laughs> and and how important they are so that's a another really fun kind of non-fiction book that i recommend okay nice and guess what we didn't leave any time <laughs> for q a so um i don't I know if any of you talk. all are... oh, oh i just i mean i'll, I'll say a stranger in alandria um sophia samatar like honestly it's one of those really books i've read in my life and certainly of the last 10 years and it's all about like literacy and and different cultures and moving from one culture to another literate cultures and non-literate ones and like the difference between that and like how you know yourself and others and it's a ghost story and it's just it's just truly mind-blowing all right sorry about that i thought you i thought you're the one that said brandon sanderson i i was <laughs> i know me lost. me and so. alaya look a lot alike so i can see why you got confused <laughs> I can't see her though. I don't know if anybody else can oh, see her. But oh, I can her see video her. Oh, yeah. Oh, we can. All, I can see her. 
I can hear I can hear you, Aliyah. I just can't see you right now. <laughs> All right. So um, our time our time is up. Um, I guess if you want to continue on in one of the chat rooms, I don't know if any of you all are going to be hanging out later. Um, so maybe some questions can get answered. But thank you, thank you, everyone, panelists, and everyone. This was fun. This was a fun one. <laughs>